this is a Sony TC-FX211 and this video is going to be about fitting new belts to this cassette deck when I bought it, it came with rubber bands for belts and this is how it sounded now that does not sound good Let's have a look at these belts. I might take these belts off and order some new ones. Whoever did this at least had an idea not to get too much tension on these. They don't seem to be too bad not over tensioned or anything so it should be just a matter of taking them off and ordering the correct size of belts real belts to suit this and it should be a relatively easy job to rebuild this as well so I'm going to take these off and get some new, order some new ones in tomorrow. And get this done, this should be a relatively easy job. Speed adjustment is here. Even if I cut these belts, we should be able to measure what the size of them was, so that's relatively good. Well, what I've done is I've cut these two belts in half, so I can take them off without dis dismantling the mechanism. We've seen the path. Of the belts on the video that uh, you're keeping a record of this one was easy enough to come off and um, and I don't have anything that will fit okay I've got new belts for this unit for me it's been about a week later for you probably a bit less and we'll see if these are the right ones I'll start by undoing these four screws that hold the mechanism in the chassis and um, we'll have a look from there The door, uh, the door will have to come off as well before I can pull it out, I guess. Um, there's a plug-in plug here, so that should be okay. Yep. Let's get the front door off first. Which lifts up and out at the top. And that's off. Uh, allow us to pull out the mechanism towards the back of the unit. Now with those four screws removed, I think this is ready to come out. Hopefully the front face plate doesn't have to come off. Yeah, one more here. That's out. So look at the front. 
from the front. The keys come out easily, but there's something at the top that's holding it. Hopefully it's not the whole faceplate that we have to unscrew, but probably is. Okay. Looking at it from the front, it does look like this bracket here is stopping the mechanism from coming out. So it does look like the faceplate will have to come off. At the bottom of the faceplate, there's three screws holding the whole thing together. And virtually after you remove the knobs, the three knobs for the bias knob, the balance knob and the recording level knob, it comes out and the mechanism falls free of the whole thing. So you can put that aside and we've got the mechanism out in the open. There's still a bit of gunk there from the old belts that have to be cleaned off. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, looking at the pulleys, there's still a bit of gunk on there from the old pulleys. And with that motor, I'm not sure we, if I can get the belts on it from this way without undoing it because there is a bracket that's in the way. So I'll try that first. I'll try if I can get the mo uh, uh, belts on without taking out the motor. And if not, I'll have to undo the motor um looking at the front of the mechanism i might take out these two screws and take this backing plate off as well um that would give us a bit more visibility of what's going on inside yeah with those two screws removed i can remove that backing plate at the front of the mechanism and that actually um Allow me to get into the counter belt um, pulley as well. It all looks pretty good in there. The counter pulley being this one here behind um, or in front of that um, cog there. And once that, pull, uh, once that uh, belt is on, when I fit the backing plate on there, they'll keep it in place um, for refitting and everything, so I can hook it up on the other end of the counter. Might grease up the cogs a little bit while I'm here, give it a good clean. And again, looking at the front, the motor looks like it's attached on that screw and that screw there to pull it out. If I have to, I might remove them. Might have to remove them as well to get the belt on. But we'll see how we go. Before I go any further, I'll have to get the gunk off this pulley here and clean it with some isopropyl alcohol and some cotton buds. Um, that front cover and the counter belt, um, that's not an issue that can go on last and the cover can go on last just before the front door goes on. It's just a matter of that uh, motor belt, whether it will fit without taking out the motor or not. That will be the most um, you know, complex part of the whole thing, I think. So, yeah, let's clean those. I've decided to remove those screws and uh, under the motor to get to that uh, main belt. It's just a lot less fiddly that way. So with these two screws removed from the inside, 
the motor just about drops out by itself I'll be able to clean the pulley and throw the belt on before putting it back in that's just as well that the motor came out or that I pulled it out um, I was able to clean some gunk some more gunk out of that V groove in that um, pulley so that could have caused problems later uh, but that's all gone now on the other pulleys there's a bit of gunk too there in the V pulleys right in the end of it but it's not coming out this one has a little bit that came out um, get a drop of oil on the two speak and drop some in the on the motor shaft That's about all you need. Oh, it's hardly there, but yeah. Drop of oil on the shaft. Lubricate the motor. We won't be going in there. Work it in like that, and I'm going to degrease it again with that um, alcohol before fitting the belt and uh, screwing up the motor back in. Now with putting the motor back in, um, you can see that guard that's there in place with that pin as well that really prevents um, you from putting a new belt on it without taking it out. Um, fortunately the cable for the motor is only long enough to mount into one place and there's some locating dowels on there. So even if you didn't take any good notes of how it came out, there's only really one way that we can go in, um, so that's not um, not too hard. So I have to throw that belt on first, and then um, screw up the motor into place. Yeah, that um, that guard there with that pin really, if that wasn't there, um, it'd be something you could do without taking it out. But then again, it probably helps holding the belt in once um, you put it on so we'll do that next so with the motor pulley cleaned final one more final time we'll throw the belt on it and um, locate it on its dowels and it goes around the black pulley on the flywheel like that and it just worked itself out it will more or less stay there like that now um, now I have to turn the mechanism around holding that motor in place and screw it in from the top here through those through that space there ideally just throw the belt on the pulley on the motor and leave leave this end off that's what that guard and that pin is for um is to prevent the belt from falling off when you're screwing it all off so just leave that belt off for now turn it around and um, screw up the motor and then we can throw the belt on the pulley itself. So on the locating dowels there. Like that. And now we want to screw it off. So with the motor on its mount. In the, on its locating pins. Belt on. Loose on the other side. We turn it around without losing the location preferably like that keeping pressure on the motor itself from the back get to the front and with a long screwdriver
I'm coming from the front. And like that. This is pretty loose at this stage, and we've got another one in that corner there. That's also work to be done up. And once these screws are on, that's basically a motor. in place with a belt attached on it yeah we'll try it this way and that is on i haven't got it tight at this stage let's have a look at it the belt thanks to those um things that you can't put it on while it's um, in place keep the belt, belt from falling off so that is good it goes on actually we should actually tighten proper the motor itself and then throw the belt on the flywheel It's screwing into plastic, so that's no, no, it's screwing into the motor, into the metal part of the motor. But we are working with the plastic bracket, that's plenty tight for that application. Now we throw on the belt on the black flywheel pulley there. Like that. Just to be a pain, pain, the belt did actually slip off onto the greasy part of the shaft that I just greasened up, uh, greased up earlier. So I've had to take it apart again and um, redo it um, to get the grease off the belt. And hopefully that will do the trick now. Maybe I will put in tension so it doesn't actually do that again. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's better. I thought the belt was a bit tight but it slipped into the groove in between the shaft and the pulley okay so we'll just tighten it up again and that will do the trick now at this stage we get this belt on for the flywheel it's time to for the uh, for the second belt to go on on the lower part of this pulley there's the clutches and the smaller pulley on the flywheel like that and then onto the lower part of the pulley like that that's on there properly except it will have to work itself out we just did that's two belts on and it's time to um, put the mechanism back together 
or it is really together, you didn't have to really take it apart, but um, into the chassis and um, the timing belt, the timing belt, the tape counter belt, I can get to from the front before I put the face plate in. I can hook it up on here, take it through to the side, to the counter, um, while it's in the chassis, I think, that um, that should do. We'll find out for sure in a moment. One other thing that I would like to do is, on the capstan behind this washer here, Get a drop of oil in there to lubricate the capstan bearing underneath that washer and then just work the capstan up and down, work the lube in and they'll give it a service for a while um, and then just clean up the excess grease that might have uh, the lube that might have got away around and I'll give you a good uh, long service for a while now yeah, the cassette well goes back into there at the top first once it's at the top it just slides in at the bottom as well. Now we've got these four screws to put in from the back. Um, the counter belt will go on here onto that idler pulley there. And um, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, counter pulley will go on this pulley here. Counter belt onto that um, idler pulley there and onto another pulley on the other end. These gears, I might give them a drop of uh, lube as well. That should keep them working nice and smooth. Um, yeah, let's get those screws in at the other side, at the back, and do the rest shortly. Next step is to screw off the plastic fascia to the chassis. Three screws underneath the unit. And then we move on back to the inside of the unit and screw off the cassette mechanism to the chassis as well. So inside the unit we've got two screws down the bottom including the one with the earthing wire, another screw here and a bracket mounted on two screws at the top here. We have to screw that off next and then we can move on to fitting the counter belt from the front of the unit onto the idler pulley and the next pulley here which is the actual pulley for the counter and we'll do that next with that bracket here you need to get this end underneath the plastic fascia first and then bolt it up then it might mount in there properly now let's get the counter belt on and um, that will be it for the belts With the three belts that I've ended up buying for this deck, and none of them are really long enough for the counter belt, so I've dug this one out, out of my collection. Uh, remember, this deck was running on rubber bands. Um, so let's get this counter belt on. This is the last belt out of the lot. And what I'll do, I'll fold it in half. And it'll just feed it through into the cassette mechanism, to the front of the cassette mechanism through there. Until I grab it on the other side. 
At that time I hook it up on the take-up spindle and take it to this pulley here. Looking at it from the front, that belt goes on to the take-up spindle. We'll grab it from the back where you fed it from and hook it up on that end pulley on the other side so on that pulley there now let's get it on true so that's just getting hooked up on something there there yep, that's worked itself out there and for extra tension you put it all over the idler pulley and that is our last belt on on the final pulley on the idler tension pulley and on the take up reel pulley on the other side so there on the take up spindle pulley and that spins our counter like that now I'd just like to lubricate the gears a little bit and then throw the cover back on knobs and the cassette mechanism door and that'll be it for testing using a two speaker I applied tiny amount of uh, grease to um, the gears and uh, now let's get the backing plate on backing plate is attached on two screws on top of the backing plate inside the mechanism let's get that on so that drops into the unit like this and where it's supposed to sit like that and screw it off once it's in place with the cassette door fitted and the knobs fitted now we can test the unit and set the speed on it um one more thing in the process of repairs um, this um, lead came unsoldered it's for the power for the motor we have to solder that in as well before testing with testing I've got a homemade frequency tape made up and um, I'll download a frequency counter app and I'll set the speed to that With that now fixed, let's continue. With the motor now working, in play, fast forward. And rewind. It's a noisy old tape, some really old tape, but yep, alright, ready for tone tests and speed setting. Now I've let the deck run out a bit and seat the belts in before I do the speed adjustment. For that I've got a brand new tape that I've um, recorded um, from a digital app um, or a frequency generator app some tones for adjusting the speed and for adjusting azimuth on the 
on um, deck on the head so I'll let that tape run out on side A and side B so for about an hour or close to it and then we'll see how the speed looks So with a test tape, tape playing, I was managed. I managed to adjust the speed using a tone, and and now it sounds pretty good. It actually, sounds very good. Now let's check out some music played on it. With the new belt, it wasn't off by a lot, but it was a little bit slow. And uh, now it's adjusted perfectly almost, apart from the wow and flutter. And this is the deck playing now.